Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate everybody for taking time out of their day to spend time to chat with us about auction and event fundraising. Um, this is part of a series, so you can join us for the next couple of weeks, actually almost a, a month, over a month, we're going to be doing different seminars. So I really appreciate it. Before we get started, I want to let you know this is in listen only mode, but we do not want to stifle your voices. We want to hear from you. So drop in any questions or comments in the chat box in the bottom right hand corner and you can practice that now. I see Grace is the first one that did so. Hi, Grace. Um, drop in there a where you're um, joining us from geographically, as well as let us know what kind of group that you're supporting with your auction fundraiser. And the reason I'm asking you that is just so that we can um, plan our future sessions and make sure that we, uh, you know, include everybody in our discussions. Um, but also, I'll invite you afterwards to join our Facebook page, Auction Team Talk, and we can continue that conversation online. Um, hello from Reading. That's my uh, my backyard where I grew up. Nice to see everybody. Okay, awesome. And then it'll give you guys an opportunity to connect with each other with like-minded people, um, either geographically or from your group that you're supporting. So, like I said, I wanna welcome you to this webinar series. This is our webinar series on virtual event fundraising for 2021. Each webinar is jam-packed with information and will be available for playback. Using 2020, which wasn't so far ago, long ago, as a guide, we will talk about the options that you can implement to make 2021 a success. So let's go ahead and get started. So the last quarter of 2020, there were 1,500 auctions and event fundraisers that were conducted using Octria. This was for all types of fundraising groups, charities, foundations, communities, in the last quarter of 2020, we saw fantastic success with groups bringing in over, how much do you think they brought in? Chat, drop it in the chat. I'll give you a couple seconds to put in some numbers. 1,500 groups over the last quarter. How long do you, how much do you thought they think they brought in in total? I see a couple numbers coming in. Five mil, one mil. Come on, I see them coming in. Ah, somebody hit it. $15 million. I'm so thrilled for these groups. They do such wonderful things throughout their communities, and I'm sure you do too. So today, we are going to take a full overview of all the ingredients that can be used to make up the event fundraiser. Not only are we going to go over the pieces, but we'll chat about the type of commitment and work it will take to, to implement this. So we're going to start with some advice in reviewing your history and goals. And guess what? you're gonna be have the right answer because there is no wrong answer. There's four categories that we're gonna talk about. Online auctions and donations, we'll talk about those together. And then we'll talk about a virtual event and a virtual event with live auctions. And we'll talk about those together also. So we're gonna talk about tools and technologies so that you can start to have some informed discussions with your fundraising team and make some good decisions. We'll chat about reach and engagement. This comes up in every conversation. So we've dedicated an entire webinar to this topic, but I'll sprinkle in a few tips for you guys today. And then of course, we always open up our discussions to questions and answers. So just like if you were traveling from New York City to Los Angeles, there's many routes to get there from point A to point B. You want to take the route that is A on budget, has the correct pilot or driver, meaning your auction team and your leadership, as well as the correct vehicle, meaning what kind of auction and fundraising activities you wanna do. So let's go back. I want you to review your history of events. You can talk to other organizations around the area, but go ahead and look at your data and not just your auctions. What tidbits can you pick up that worked well for your other events or your fundraisers or even communications? And how do you expand that factor? What did poorly? Be honest with yourself and then just eliminate it. Let it go, it's okay. For instance, if a raffle did not work, shifting from a live and silent to an online will probably yield the same outcome. Some audiences just don't love a raffle and that's okay. Take a look at your auction items. What was the expected value and what exceeded that value? 
Were they commodity type items, priceless, keepsakes? I urge you to take a look at your data and your history. And then keep in mind, auction and event fundraisers really do build year over year and they grow. So take the time to learn what works and then your audience actually becomes accustomed to the event and they know what to expect going forward. Okay, so we're gonna talk about fundraising auctions in this discussion, uh, fundraising types in this discussion. First, we're gonna talk about the online auction and the donation campaign, and we'll probably, we'll pair those together as we chat. And then separately, or in the, uh, we'll talk about the virtual event and the live virtual auction. So you're gonna see this smoothie theme throughout the theme of this slide deck, as well as for the entire series. So you'll get used to seeing this as we chat through the discussion. So you're gonna choose your ingredients and then the binder is the mission and the cause that pulls it all together. The mission is the liquid and the flavor that really makes people open their wallets and donate towards your cause. So on the left-hand side, Let's first talk about your fundraising operations that you may want to include. And you can pick and choose the ones that are right for you. Auction, online auction, donation, for sale items, text to give, raffle, wine pull, maybe even consignment auction items. For the virtual event, your key ingredients that you may want to include are an impact video, testimonials, sponsor placement, you may wanna do a full show, raise the paddle, live auction, and maybe some ticket swag donation sales in advance. Okay, so let's start with online events. So this has no virtual or live component whatsoever. However, what is important, and this is for everything, branding and your mission fundraiser. You want to make sure that your website matches your publications, matches your emails, matches your social media. So plan this out in advance. If you have somebody on your team that is visual and can help with colors and branding, I mean, bring them in just for that particular purpose. The simplest event fundraiser, auction fundraiser is indicated with the uh, red mason jar. And we're doing that with a donation campaign. The setup is the most simple, however, it needs to be purposeful. And you're gonna hear me repeat this multiple times today. Moving over to the right, you can add a few more ingredients and you'd have an online auction, maybe a couple for sale items. And then some additional ingredients will require more time to implement as you might be adding on daily promotions, sponsors, and auction items. I am indicating with the straws that you'll need a few more people to share the work as you add on more of these elements. And although the straws are whimsical here, throughout the presentation, they indicate real people and real work that is increased as you add additional ingredients and additional components to your fundraiser and event activities. Okay, so let's talk about the benefits of an online auction event. The good thing is it can run for hours, not days. Pre-registration isn't required. The auction items can be appealing to a wide audience and you can have a broader audience. And with no ticket or admission required, anybody can bid from their uh, browser. It's easy to share an event. It's easier to share an item. And these can typically be run with a pretty small team. And the best part about it is the auction is open 24 hours. So bids can come in while you are sleeping. So let's talk about some boosters for an online auction. You can do daily updates, day only items, featured items with an influencer. You can put up for sale merchandise, your donation buttons. I encourage you if you're gonna do an online auction, um, proxy bidding is already turned on, but turn on anti-sniping also. Text to register, text to donate, text to bid is available for any plan that is on the Emerald plan or the Diamond plan. So anything um, above the free plan. 
And of course, you have the ability to make a beautiful website with the Octria platform. If you um, logged in early, you saw the video running of some websites that have run over the last quarter, and you can see how beautiful those are. Of course, you want to display your auction items in your catalog in a organized fashion, um, but also in a strategic fashion. We'll go into that a little bit later. And then I suggest that you always include video on your website. And then with your auction items, you can include video for a particular auction item. So if there's something that you really want to feature, you can put a short little snippet in there too. Okay. Online event consideration. So heed this advice. There's limited interaction, of course, because you're not face to face and there is no social part of that um, event that you would have if you were doing it at a party or a gala. That's the given, we know that. Make sure you think about the distribution of auction items post event. Make sure you plan that out and where you will be um, fulfilling auction items, where people will be picking them up, how you will be sending them out, all those details. Plan that out in advance. And be aware that bidders tend to be active at the beginning of an auction with a lull in the middle and then activity at the end. So that's why I'm suggesting have some sort of plan to push or engage for that final push to get more people in and more bids. Also, suggest having less friction for registration. The least amount of information that you require will heed more bidders. More bidders you have, the more bids you'll have, and hopefully the higher the bids will go. So the chances of, hiring, of having more bidders and higher bids is by reducing that um, re additional requirements. And if you're moving from a um, gala or a party or an in-person event, you may need to educate your audience a little bit, but that's pretty simple. Okay, let's talk about a donation only campaign. If you're not planning a full auction, you can still raise money and here are the benefits in doing so. It's a standalone campaign. So it lives by itself and it stands on its own. You can showcase your mission and your successes, and that becomes the front and center. Use video and images. Get your word across. Get your mission across. Get that impact. Get people to you know, feel those heartstrings being pulled. And you can expand your reach with the donation-only campaign because it's online. And like I said, it's easy to share um, through emails as well as any sort of social media. And then if there is a matching donation that is planned, publicize that loudly. Scream from the top of the Chrysler building, right? Just like Annie said, tell everybody and don't be shy asking for donations. So here's some donation only boosters, ways you can booster your donation only activities. Be crystal clear about where those funds are going. Make it a fund to need, make it easy with a quick tap to bid, um, or excuse me, quick tap to donate, and then use your text to donate functionality. It's included in every plan, um, Emerald and Diamond, and it makes it super easy for people to participate. And then of course, with your donation campaign, you'll set that up as immediate payment, so there's no registration required. Okay, considerations for a donation-only campaign. Again, heed this advice. It's going to appeal to a cash-only audience. So if somebody is looking to get something back from their donation like they would in an auction, that probably won't be a good match. However, there are plenty of people that prefer to do that because they know that 100% of those funds, um, even with auctions, 100% of their funds go back, but sometimes there's some, some, um, some softer costs involved especially if you're doing an event with a party and things like that. Um, consider the timing with other asks or events. Be strategic about when you're asking, how long you're asking, and how close that is to other activities that you've done. 
look internally for some guidance. Talk to some people around your group, what's worked in the past, what hasn't. And then the most important is to use your email or your communication channel that you use regularly to notify everybody of your donation campaign. So if you're a school and you're using robocalls weekly, use that for your communication. If you have a CRM or if you're using your um, email program, use that to get that information out there. And give people a reason to visit the donation page. What's on that page besides giving? What are you going to provide them? What information? What some, what's something new that they're going to learn on there? Um, do you have a big reveal? Is there there's something special, a reason to go to that donation page? And then once they get there, give them a reason to give. Be strategic in the way that you set up your donation amounts. Make it the smallest unit of service available. What's it funding? What's your core number? How many people will you be feeding? How many students will you be educating? How many animals will you be sheltering? Get that down to something that's very tangible, very real, so that people know exactly where their monies are going and how it will be funding the, um, the mission. Okay, so now we're pivoting to the virtual events and we're going to talk about those. The goal of the virtual event is to gather like-minded community to support your cause in a virtual situation. So here's a couple questions for you. A, where will people be viewing your show? Will it be on Facebook or YouTube? Will it be on your website? Will it just be a simple Zoom meeting? And then B, how are you going to get the broadcast out? How are you pushing out that information? Are you going to do it natively on a platform if you're using Facebook and just hitting the go live button? Um, same thing with YouTube. Are you just going to push that button? Um, and you really just have one camera stream at that point. It would just be a, a, a one way conversation um, with a little bit of a chat. If you want to get more sophisticated with multiple cameras at multiple locations, you want to share your computer screen, then you're going to need a compositing program like OBS or StreamYard. So here's the benefits of running a virtual event. The benefits would be you're connecting for a purpose, of course. You have a longer format and you can engage and share your impact and messaging. You can tie that in with your online auction that may be running concurrently. You can have an opportunity for messaging from your leadership, your executive director, um, principal, president, whoever's going to be a, a, uh, a, a, a person that can um, share that messaging clearly and make people want to give impact stories, testimonials, videos, you know, show exactly how those funds have gone in the past and where they're going to go in the future. Some groups have added a pre-party to their virtual events where they've actually charged a little bit of a ticket price and they've done a pre-party activity. Um, some groups will run it on Facebook still or YouTube and they'll have live chat running and people can converse back and forth, kind of like our little chat box down here in the corner. Um, and then having a live event or a virtual event gives the opportunity for public recognition for donors and sponsors. And it's okay to have some fun while you're doing this. So here are the benefits of doing a virtual only event. So I'm talking virtual only, no live auction. And, you know, it's hard for me to say no live auction as I'm representing Octree, but I'm going to show you what those opportunities are also. So for the benefits, you can focus more time on your mission and it may be considered more fun. And we've seen some groups do this over the fourth quarter. Some of them had a full event. Some of them had an entire symphony and a concert. Um, some groups have done trivia or a special service. Um, something special like a concert like that can live on afterwards and you can post that content and ask for donations also if anybody had missed it live. We've seen groups do um, pre-event parties with some sort of painting or cooking or wine tasting. Um, and then of course, you always wanna have running your donation campaign. Okay, so now let's look at adding a live auction, of course, to a virtual event. 
The benefits here are, of course, the first bullet is your live auction items. So if you have special auction items that by explaining them or showing them some people something um, will increase the bidding, then by all means, consider adding a live auction. I, one of the live auctions I was watching um, a couple weeks ago, they had a little puppy on there. And let me tell you, I, everybody was ooing and aahing over it. Um, the good part about adding a live auction is bidders can bid live, they can donate, and then the virtual uh, event coordinator, whoever's up there speaking, the MC, the auctioneer, can recognize the bidders as they bid and donate. And people still like to hear their name called out loud. It's an opportunity to raise money using the special auction items, and it adds variety to a virtual event, so you can sprinkle it in. The live auction builds energy still, so you can encourage those that are not bidding on the live items to donate in an increment that is meaningful for them. So although they may be watching the live auction and not bidding, they'll still have an opportunity to give. And to run the live auction, it's really easy with Octria's live auction controller, and that makes the magic happen. We have an entire webinar just dedicated to that if you wanted to learn more about it. Okay, so let's talk about the virtual or live auction. This is the virtual tools and tech on a slide. And in a few weeks as part of this series, we're doing a full webinar with a professional event producer to take a deeper dive on this. The same theory here is with the straws and the glasses as a visual metaphor. As you move from left to right, you're elevating the event with more elements. However, now with the straws, you're going to need more help, more tech, more people. So if you're doing something like an online or a Zoom, it might just take a couple people and you can do that. If you want to get a little more sophisticated um, and you want to have a couple streams with speakers um, in a video stream, you are probably going to want to add on something like a StreamYard or an OBS. And then if you want to get really fancy with some additional video screen, streams, you want to have your cryons like you would on a news uh, that you see on the news or on TV. Um, you would need some more people and some more tech. And then if you really want to make a full blown show, you may want to include a studio and a producer. So for your virtual event considerations, again, for considerations, I'm suggesting to heed this advice. Fill the time with meaningful content. Plan out your entire script from the very first hello to the last goodbye. You don't want to just wing it or hope for the best. You want to get the audience to tune in, but once they're there, you want to keep the audience's attention. And you need enough of an audience to make it work, especially if you have a live auction, you want to have enough bidders to actually click the button and bid on something. And then make sure you plan for multiple practices with everybody that's involved and with every computer, tablet, notebook that people are going to be using on the day of or during the actual event. So make sure everybody is using the exact computers, the exact software that they are going to be using, that you're going to be using for the, for the, the, the um, event that you're going to do. Don't leave anything up to chance. Okay, so let's talk about this from the Octria perspective. For Octria usage for your pre-event, you're going to set up your website. And here's an example of one that's currently up right now. Um, sponsor sales, you can have your ticket sales up there, for sale items in advance. Of course, you can set up your catalog preview. And the best part about um, having your pre-event page this is your landing page for general inquiries, but you can set up a solicitation form on the event website so that you can seek donations, you can post your actual letter, and then the system will notify you when somebody, or at least the, the system will um, allow people to put in their solicitation or put in their donations directly, and then you can approve them as the admin. Okay, so when the event actually happens, you might be familiar with this already. Um, if you've uh, worked with Octree in the past or seen some of the online auctions that are going on, you're going to go live with your auction and your donations, of course. 
first impressions matter. Your auction catalog should be desirable. So usually that first page has, you know, a good uh, nine, 12 auction items on it, depending on how you set up your page. Make sure those auction items are diverse. Make sure those photos look fabulous and make sure it's a, a, um, a different um, types of auction items that will appeal to a broad audience, as well as different price points. Um, you can sell buy-in parties as a buy it now, and then you don't have to worry about any of the system communications. Octria will handle all those outbid notifications for you. I always suggest adding proxy bidding and anti-sniping to your online auctions. Um, use the website to optimize your messaging and your catalog. It's there. Go ahead and use it um, to make sure that you have your catalog up there, your messaging, your branding. It's a great way to make sure that your cause is front and center and that there's a reason people are giving. And then I encourage people to encourage their bidders, if you're doing especially an online auction, to download the Octria app. It's great for getting quick notifications, quick tap to bid, um, and the bids will go up and up and up. And then some groups include a thermometer on their page. Um, some groups don't. They don't want to reveal kind of um, where they're at if they're way below. They don't want to look as if they're, they're not meeting their goals. Some groups don't want other groups to know what they're doing. Um, and you can always add it in afterwards. If you're, if you're trending well and you wanna share that, you can. If you wanna pull that off, it's easy to customize on the website. So let's talk about Octria closeout and post event. Octria closeout and post event notifications. So the system will send out item one notifications. And if you have credit card enabled, they don't have a payment link on there. You as the admin can trigger receipts and statements. And then the bidder can actually view, review their account summary at any time on the website. Post event communications, plan this out while you're working on your, your activities, your, your auction plan. How are you going to share the information on following up on spending? Where did those funds go? In order for you to ask again, you have to show them where it went so that you have the right to go back and ask them for additional support. So post updates. If you ran a live event, post that video with a donation button on it. That content can continue to live on and continue to secure donations for you. And then, of course, with the Octria system, um, you probably know that you can run all your reports and export your data as you need. OK, so here I want to talk about going online. Um, and we hear all the time, go online, broaden your audience, go online, broaden your audience. Yes, that can happen. But a build it, they will come philosophy is just a little too dreamy. So this illustration is showing the closer to the core, the stronger the interaction and support can be expected. Thus, the dark, solid green in the middle. And the further you go out, the weaker the connection. And that's why it gets a little fuzzy. So how tight is your core? And how will the contributions affect the core or the community at large? So the wider and stronger rings, the wider the stronger rings will get and the greater the chance of reaching the outer rings if your funds are helping a more diverse purpose. A charity or group that is narrow in scope um, for the group of ambassadors and friends is where you wanna focus and spend your communication and your effort time because you wanna maximize that ring. So example, a school or a closed membership where the funds only help that group, chances are the outer ring of support will be much harder to get and take a whole lot more effort. Although it's not possible to go out one or two rings, if, the school, if you're a school, look at feeder schools or alumni, and if you're a membership group, look at verticals or any sort of vendors that lean in for knowledge. So if your charity or group is wide in scope, you can probably depend on some outer ring support. Evidence of impact makes it easier to justify a broader audience and to ask for and expect some real contributions. 
everyone will want to come and bid is a little bit pie in the sky. And I just want to be realistic here. So the further the ring you go out, the higher the effort. However, there is opportunity. Bottom line is you still need ambassadors and family and friends to help. So over the fourth quarter, we've gotten tons of feedback, but here's a couple anecdotal stories that I wanted to share with you. Carol had run auctions for multiple years, but they never had a donate now functionality. They were afraid to ask for donations. Sure enough, they added it this year and were pleasantly surprised when thousands came in. And then there was another comment relating, actually there are lots of comments relating to our texting features. Um, text to bid was big with their bidders as well as text to register. So this is just the beginning of our conversation as it relates to your 2021 event fundraisers. This is the schedule of events that we have through March 10th, and I invite you to um, register for any and all of these webinars, bring your entire auction team with you. I'll send you a link after this ends and it'll have our profile page and you can register for those events. And then stay in touch with us, we are social. We post daily to Facebook and Twitter. And if you wanna share your auction with us, we will reshare it. And remember, pictures and videos make that post so much more appealing, so include those too. So we have two new offerings of enhanced support at Octria that can be purchased adding on to any emerald or diamond plan. And the Octria launch starts with a live discovery call and then the Octria launch team will do all the setup work for your event. They'll load the auction items, set up the auction website and make the, help you make the most out of your event fundraiser. By adding on launch, you can spend your time on other important tasks. And then we also have Octria Assist. It's a single consultation or training for your team. And all these details can be found on our Octria website.